All right. Are we partying? Are we up and rolling here? Okay. Do we have Jason? Farantella, Jason. Are you there? Hey, what up, dog? I'm her, dog. All right, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. This is round two of Breakfast with Ben. I'm Ben Rogers from ding, the Ben ding, ding, ding. Show. This is Jason Farantello. Why is that music happening? People are celebrating you. I'm muted. That's it. the thing we got to mute. We got to mute that. Yeah, That's I'm, the worst yeah, thing it. about this app. So <laughs> I got this it. Is a, this is a brand new app. Um, and I guess it's not brand new, but it is a new app. And when I heard that Mark Cuban was involved with an app, it immediately got my attention. I'm like, oh, hell yes. It's probably going to be incredible. Um, the Ben and Skin Show, we pride ourselves in being one of the more interactive radio shows in the universe. Like we actually love interacting with our listeners. It's, it's one big old community. And so this is an app where while we're doing the show, you can actually just jump on and be a part of it. So you can come talk to us. You could do video like this, or you could uh, just do audio, but you can respond down low. Like you can clap or do some of those things. Like the music thing is the bad thing. Got to get rid of the music thing. They got to get rid of the uh, the music bot too. That The bot that just plays random, terrible music while you're waiting for it to start. Yeah, or let us choose the music. I like that. Yeah, idea. no, yeah. Like, give me more. Like, give me some beats. I would, I would handle, you know, just some hip hop beats. I, f- I, I forgot I was in because I forgot that I changed my avatar to. I had to buy a suit, and so now my avatar is me in a dressing room in a fly suit. Oh, very nice. Which, yeah, as why, you know, Ben, that's not me. Why were <laughs> you, you rocking a suit? a suit? No, I never have. And in, in oh wait, so why in Hawaii? In my wedding, that's probably the okay, only time you wedding, ever yeah. and that was a real casual suit. <laughs> Why were you wearing on. a suit? I'm going to a bat mitzvah tomorrow. Okay, cha cha, real smooth, bro. So, uh, do we have um, do we have skin? Let me see here. I think we do. Let's do this. Oh, he's got a little kissy emoji. Let's invite him up here. Do so, things. yeah, this it, all along the way, if you have a question or you want to hop on, you want to be a part of it, you can. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Skin Wade. How you doing, brother? Go ahead, dude. Well, this is, are we, can we cuss on here? Absolutely. We prefer it. This is a bullshit lie. <laughs> I've been to your house and that is not where you eat breakfast. <laughs> well, I got in there and I was about to, uh, I was just in the living room and I just realized, you know, this app and and the production value involved, all these things are, we're learning on the fly. And I realized I was in a giant spacious room and it was probably going to sound like trash. So I went into my office area. I hope you took your breakfast in there. I've got these little discs behind me that are floating off into the sky. And if I frame it right, it's kind of like a wonky uh, Mickey Mouse thing. Okay. Okay. See yeah, that? Nice. Nice. Hey, do you want to, uh, I want to, I, 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 I know you have a lot of special guests, but I wanted to force a special guest onto your show. Okay. There's Bill ghost busting ass Murray. Oh, look at that yep. dog. Hi buddy. That dog, right. that dog's name is Bill ghost busting ass Murray. It, it, we've talked about it on the Ben and skin show. That dog used to have a show dong, but yeah. now it's just <laughs> pretty <laughs> Now, when you say show dong, it's not like a dong that was dedicated to our show. It was, it was a, it didn't have a Ben and Skin tattoo on it. It was just an extra large dong for a dog of his size. Right, right, exactly. So, dude, you're joining us. Thank you for jumping on. And uh, you're actually undergoing radiation therapy right now. We miss you so terribly on the show, but you're actually getting radiation therapy in like 25 minutes. Yeah, I have a short window here because I'm going to go shoot lasers into my head. Um, but I uh, I wanted to jump on and say hi and be a part of the lie that is breakfast with Ben. Yeah. Why? Why is it a lie? There's no breakfast in front of you, dude. Oh, dunked on. Pew, Incredible. Pew, 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 pew. Incredible. Okay, so... Was that actually sitting there, or did you frantically send Max to go fetch breakfast for you out of the kitchen? 
So we have this thing. My diet is, uh, I have a very strict miles. My, I'm in my office. My son is trying to watch YouTube. He gives zero fucks that, that we're doing this right now. Right. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm on this very strict diet. I eat the exact same thing every single day. And so my sweet, sweet wife is just in the habit of like, whatever dumb shit you're doing, I'll just deliver it right there. So I'm grateful that she helps me out. So she just set that down. Okay. That's good. So the yeah. lie has now been rectified. It is breakfast. <laughs> it was never a lie. It was, it, it was, was always, <laughs> it was a solid lie for four and a half minutes. <laughs> so dude, tell us uh, about bastards of soul. Like what is going on? The new album's out. New album dropped today or, you know, 11 o'clock last night. Cause the way streaming services work. So, uh, whatever your streaming service of choice is, I, I tweeted out a link earlier that'll take you to Apple or Spotify or whatever you like. And then if you're so inclined to buy vinyl, uh, there's all the, <laughs> look at that. Oh, all, all the local stores have it. If you're watching this from somewhere in another city, they should have it too. It's got nationwide distribution. And then you can always order it at bastardsofsoul.com. And then tomorrow, if you're down south in Oak Cliff, they're doing a peace party slash memorial for Chadwick. Uh, there's lots of good local press, Texas Monthly, D Magazine, Dallas Morning News had an article today, KXT. So a lot of people are, are saying lots of nice things about the record. And then it's also tomorrow's a big day, Ben, because if you're on the north side, we have sumo wrestling at Rollertown Beer Works. What a crazy event that's going to be. Yeah, very excited about the release of our new uh, Rollertown Japanese Lager House of Warlords. And uh, to do that, we teamed up with the Japanese Consulate of Dallas. And uh, there's a takeout drum performance. The Dallas Sumo Club is coming out. This, these are not like fat, uh, fake halftime show sumo suits. This is real, actual sumo wrestling happening in Salina at Rollertown. So, Man, we got a badass team. You and I get so much credit for this brewery, but it's obviously so much more than us. Tommy Miller makes exceptional beer. Our marketing team puts together really cool events, and uh, we got a lot of support out there. And I just want to make sure it's for the whole team because you and I are just such a small part of it and, and honored to be so. All I've done is drink beer. That's, <laughs> that's, that's literally all I've contributed to Roller Towns going, oh, yeah, this is fucking great beer. I agree. I haven't done anything. And, dude, I feel so worthless like the last, you know, whatever it's been, two and a half months. Uh, I'm just contributing very little to the world. I'm so ready to get over this, man. Yeah, dude, we miss you and we love you. And everybody is trying to send you as much positive energy as possible. I know that, uh, you know, the, the next 10 days are very likely going to be the toughest 10 days of your entire life. Um, but uh, we're there with you every step of the way, wishing you the best. And the good news is right on the other side of that, uh, you begin the countdown to come join us back in studio. Yeah, you know, uh, every time I tune in, I hear you guys laughing hysterically going, this is the best show we've ever had. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, well, shit. <laughs> Uh, no, but I, I should probably go ahead and go put on my protective helmet so they can blast lightning bolts into my neck. But, uh, dude, congratulations on a successful launch and actually getting breakfast in front of you so your show is no longer a lie. This is something you'll never be able to experience, the joy of eating bacon. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell look, me why. I don't, want, I don't want to talk about why. Wait, look, it's Jason Farantello. He's back. So yeah, can everyone, yeah. when, when Jason pops up, can everyone see him or is this just me in the waiting room? Nah, I'm here. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to say I love you, dude. You know, I love you too, man. I'm going to come sit in your lap real soon. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> hey, uh, dude, we love you. Go get well, and we look forward to you rejoining the show, but I know I'll be talking to you all day every day until you have to change your phone number to get rid of me. So uh, just uh, let us know if you need anything. All right, you guys go put it in a jar of mayonnaise. I'll see you later. <laughs> right, see you How later, do I man. sign off, Jason? What do I do? Get out of here. All right, later. Love you. Later. Love you. There he goes. The great Jeff Skin Wade. <laughs> he did the zoom in. <laughs> I don't know if he was really trying to turn it off or just doing a zoom in. <laughs> um, so this app is cool, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, 
you know, we, we do pride ourselves in interacting with listeners and we love having special guests on and things like that. But just the fact that we can have a conversation, like we used to do the after dark thing with all, all the members of our show and uh, the ability to pull listeners into that conversation is something I'm, I'm fascinated in. So, but I, I do know there's a lot of people that are upset that this isn't available on Android, but can they, can they still watch it if they have an Android? They just can't jump in the combo. Yeah, they can still watch it through the web um, there. And then we'll obviously put the archive up on uh, the Minskin YouTube page. Uh, yeah, we're kind of feeling this thing out as we go. I think there's a way to stream, too. I think it there's a link. If we click, people, I'm going to share some stuff here. Copy this link. And I'm seeing, I see a, uh, I see Levi. Is that potentially Levi Weaver? I see Nicholas here, the country music star. I see Cheese, one of our buddies, who's been a big supporter of Roller Town. And his kid. And his kid. Uh, and uh, let me see here. You got I'm Paul. now inviting a new person to jump up here and join us too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. The great Paul Varghese. How you doing, brother? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing so well, man. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, if you don't know, you're missing out. Paul Varghese is one of the most talented comedians in all the land, and uh, we love him. Now, I typically only interact with you when you're wearing Roller Town gear, as you know, though. <laughs> I can go back and change it to my onesie. <laughs> with my you... You once accused me of only liking pictures where you're wearing a roller tent hat. I feel like you have an algorithm set up like a Google alert because <laughs> it, it comes instantly. The second I post it, it's already before it even loads, it's already a like. So, <laughs> Dude, what is up with you? How, how's everything going? Uh, things are good, man. Shows are slowly picking back up, and which is good. And uh, I think I'm kind of used to staying at home, but... Uh, Things are good, man. Got the dogs uh, bracing for Snowpocalypse 1.5. So, right, uh, dude, I, I I love following you on social media because uh, I see why you're a comedian because you're quite humorous, uh, even in even in just uh, 140 characters or 280 at a time, whatever it is. But uh, you you were referencing a couple movies that uh, that got me excited. You were referencing Mad Max, and uh, <laughs> like, are you a, are you and the, and the Terminator? Are you a big time movie guy? Uh, yes, I am also way behind on what what we consider classics. Like, I just saw The Godfather without commercials for the first time last week. Okay, so, well that's yeah, that's not bad. I, I know because how old are you? I'm forty five. Okay, so there's I'm an old man, so I'm much older than you. I'm I'm just you know I'm a senior citizen, but um, you know KT and Christine on our show are much younger too, and uh, they're like they, there's a lot of movies they haven't seen, and I always feel like uh, Skin and I are the are the old fogies because we mentioned The Godfather, and they have no idea really what we're talking about. They know it's a movie, they just haven't seen it, and so. I don't think you should feel uh, feel bad about that. I think that's probably somewhat common, right? Yeah, but I think the problem is when you watch old mo- not old movies, but classic movies, especially like with, when you've never seen them, it's like uh, I'm watching like in a 2022 mind state. So I don't know if you remember watching it, but there's a scene where James Caan, where Sonny is fighting his brother-in-law on the street. And before he hits him in the fire hydrant, he swings at him and misses but they kept that scene in the movie. He misses, and the guy still like James Harden. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, kept, yeah, they they kept that in the movie. And so watching it at 20, you know, in 2022, everybody who's in the theater with me is like big fans of it. I'm watching it for the first time. I bust out laughing when he misses. Um, it, it's hard for me to really appreciate. It. I, I understand the nostalgia of it. It led to all these other great movies, but they the greatest movie of all time has a. a obvious glitch in it so right. why that guy who, why that guy who flopped didn't get the oscar uh is beyond me but dude you said the greatest movie of all time the greatest movie of all time i thought it was we all realized it was roadhouse yes I mean, i've never seen roadhouse without commercials so what you sat through commercials to watch roadhouse <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, I, I, I admit. <laughs> Three-hour epic at that point. Can you, 
Can you? Is that the movie that you can quote all the way through? Can you do the whole um, yourself? No, I, I just know that, uh, you know, just it was such a realistic movie. The idea of, you know, a good looking guy with a mullet coming in to cool out the crowd and he could throat rip people. He just ripped their throat out. And the is, villain was just a rich guy that flew around in helicopters in a tiny town. It just it was all so realistic. Is, is, is Ghost in the Roadhouse universe? <laughs> no, I, well, yeah, it's interesting. I think go. Oh God! So you were dealing with technical issues. Uh, I think uh, I think Ghost is like the is it like the the romantic version of Roadhouse? Maybe you know. I mean, after he retired, right? Then he went with Demi Moore, and then right. got, That's what I mean. <laughs> I okay, I see. Like it, it's okay. Oh, interesting. I do like the idea of having movies tie in together. And we were talking about this the other day because. Um, Haley Joel Osment or whatever his name is. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in uh, the, you know, I See Dead People. <laughs> but, yeah. But he's also the kid that Walker told he had AIDS. Okay. Did you know that? No, no. I... Okay, there's there's an episode of uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, and little Haley Joel Osment or whatever walks up and he tells his grandparents or something, Walker told me I have AIDS. And that's just that happened. That really now, happened. Is, is this after the sixth sense or before the sixth sense? So it's before the sixth sense. He was yeah. even smaller, and then later he saw dead people. So I like to pretend that it's all one long movie too. So I see what you're saying. So you're it's saying baby people, Haley. You're saying people with AIDS can see spirits. Is that what you're saying right now? You're saying that I'm saying that. You're <laughs> that's what you're saying uh, with your words, man. I. I saw a uh, – okay, so let me ask you about this. I saw – or I listened to a podcast the other day, and it was so fucking good. It made me – it made me wonder, this concept, is there a way to do a cousin of this concept, or is anything similar to it a straight rip? And I got to ask you, okay? I'll just We'll just workshop this, okay? Okay. Because I think you'd be great for this, but um, – they go back. It was um, the podcast is called "Why Was This Made?" Have you ever listened to it? I, I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so funny, and I had heard about it before. But the idea was they go back, and it's it's some actors that are going to be kind of familiar to everybody, and they one is a husband, wife, and another guy, and they're all hilarious. And they go back and they review terrible movies, and I'm like. They go from beginning to end, and they just talk about why was this ever made. And I'm like, it's so genius. We we kind of all do that anyways. And when we talk about terrible movies, is there a way uh, to do anything similar to that without it being a straight rip and a disgusting knockoff? Uh, I think we can do it with TV shows that are really famous because I think we always tend to pick on the shows or the movies that suck and that were like box office failures. I think we should, we should punch up. We should, we should, oh. we should, we should tell, we should say why King of Queens, even though it's like incredibly successful, why it sucks. That's what well, I think. Tell, tell me why it sucks. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's basically the same story, right? Isn't it the same? It's the, it's literally, we're, we're punching, sorry, the dog is going crazy. We're literally taking, uh, a schlub of a dude trying to find the hottest woman that you can afford on CBS. And, <laughs> and then, and then everybody's an idiot. And all these, all these problems are so big. I've had some of these fights that they have on everybody loves Raymond and home improve. I've had these fights with my girlfriend and they've led to her packing my shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these women get over it. It doesn't linger on for other episodes. Like, Deborah never brings up a fight they had in season one and season five, which she should. <laughs> you know? It's not realistic. <laughs> and she should even reference it. Remember in season one when you did that? She should even they should totally break, <laughs> break the fourth, third wall. Because that's what real, some of that stuff is. Some of the stuff that Ray does is worthy of divorce. In fact, right, every, right. all those sitcoms should end. The final episode should be a divorce. <laughs> it should be a two-parter. Let's see who gets the kid. You know, right? Make it a big dramatic thing. That's how, that's that's a realistic sitcom to me. So, what do you, what do you, what type of pop culture do you consume? Like, what are the shows that you are into? 
So I'm obsessed with Food Network. I watch a lot of it. But the problem with Food Network, and I, this is, the problem is I'll keep it on in the background all the time, but I, I had to quit doing it because it was getting annoying to everybody in, the, in, in, the, uh, in our place. Um, the second anyone compliments food and says it melts in your mouth, I turn the, the channel. Why? And once I tell you that, it's the easiest way to get off. Because if I didn't, I would just leave it on all day. But watch Food Network cooking channel anytime anyone says it melts in your mouth. You'll be you'll it'll stay on for maybe five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't watch ESPN when when my team suck when the Dallas team suck I don't watch it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I don't really know what I watch anymore. I don't really watch. I watch Intervention. And that might be, you know. So I'll tell you this is a, this is a true story. It's a very short story. Very short story, but when I turned 40, um, I was doing the sulking 40 where I didn't want, really want to hang out and I was like staying in my place. My girlfriend insists we go out and get those, uh, the Korean frozen yogurt, you know, where they spin it like the state fair, you know what I'm okay. talking about? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go out to Deep Ellum, she's like, let's stop by Twilight, Twilight uh, Lounge over Deep Ellum. Let's stop in there real quick. I walk in, there's eight, just only eight people in there and they all go, surprise, okay? It's, and it's eight people that I know, I, I'm realizing. <laughs> For a second, for for literally, it, it felt like thirty seconds. In my head, I was like, "Is this an intervention?" That's what I. That's what I honestly. And then I turned my head like uh, thirty degrees, and there was a cake. I'm like, "If this is an intervention, a they're doing it at a bar, and b they brought a big, huge king of cakes cake." So it ended up being a surprise party, and it was good. But like, so I'm always bracing for the intervention. What would they have been intervening? <laughs> I don't know. Here's the thing. I think I'm a fun drunk. I've never really. <laughs> I've never. I've never. If I start a fight, like, okay, if I, I don't follow through. That's my big problem. If I start a fight, I don't end it. You know? Um, hold on. The dog's going crazy. And if I end a fight, uh, I didn't start it. So I never. I never. I never go with chapter one to the epilogue. I either start when I leave or I come in at the very end when I'm walking out the door. I'm like, yeah, he was right. And then I just keep running. So it's everybody who's drank with me enough times has, has seen me get in a fight at some point. So, uh, I'm interested in something. I, I find you to be one of the most entertaining people I've ever known. And yet somehow you've been able to manage not doing a podcast. So tell me your po <laughs> anti podcast strategy. <laughs> I'm the same way with Netflix specials. Okay. I refuse to do anything that, allow success. I don't, honestly, every time I think about getting, even when I downloaded this app, I downloaded this app last week when you texted me this morning and uh, I was like, I downloaded it last week. I don't know what to do with it. I never feel like anything I say has any merit in the sphere of podcasts. And then, and then when I see, I'm motivated like this. When I see people who have no talent making a lot of money, it doesn't, it doesn't make me think, oh, well, I have talent so I can make more money. It makes me think, Oh, I'm overthinking this thing, and I'm never gonna. <laughs> That's my logic in my head. Well, uh, look, you need to you need to sh share the Paul. You're you're hogging all the Paul. That's that's all. You, we need to use technology to let more people enjoy the Paul. And um, to that end, <laughs> tell me some of the things you got coming up. I want to anything we can promote. I know that people are just starting to do more shows, and yeah. uh, if there's anything we can promote. And I told you, you're not even taking advantage of this. I told you, text me anytime you have anything going and we will say it on the radio anytime. So just tell me anything you got cooking and we'll blow it up. Okay, so for this month, uh, the last uh, Saturday of the month, I'm at Craft and Growler, which is in Deep Ellum. I'm doing a show there. We haven't done stand up there before, but we're doing that. Over there, I'm doing with my buddy. My buddy Ryan hooked it up. So we're doing a show there at Craft and Growler in Deep Ellum on the last Saturday of March. But I taped a special at the end of October in Philly. And yes. hopefully it sees a light of day. Hopefully it does. I got a, I got a phone call uh, two months ago that they were working on the rough draft, but, or the first draft of it. But if it doesn't come out, then I'm going to have to uh, rent out a theater and, and, and do it myself and start a podcast and do all these hey. things <laughs> that we, I should have been doing. Well, we want in. We're, if, you, if you need any help or support at all, uh, we, we obviously believe in you, but there's an army of people who believe in you. We fucking love you, dude. You're hilarious. So, Please let us know anything you got cooking, and uh, we need to have you back in studio sometime soon. You let me know when. I'll be there. All right, my brother. Thanks for jumping on, man. No problem. Thanks, man. All right. There he goes, the great Paul Varghese. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Um, 
that guy is so insanely talented. Like, I just can't even get over how funny he is. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. If you want to jump on and join us, you can. And so, Jason, hop on with me here because I'm not super familiar with the Fireside app and how exactly this works. So if somebody wants to jump on and join us, do you allow them to the stage or whatever? How does that work? Uh-oh, I'm not hearing you. There you go. Yeah, because I'm muted. I'm bad at the mute button. Okay. Terrible at the mute button. The little button to the left bottom, if they click okay. that, I believe, they there should be an option where they can ask a question, and that will trigger a thing. They can type a little something there, and then it should come up. So, yeah, if anybody wants to do that, we want to hear from Cheese. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I predicted Okay. It. So I accept a request, and then we can yep. pop them on, uh, and then I invite them to video. So here's here's Chris joining us, right? Let's see if he jumps on with us. Well, thank you so much. This is Chris Rosetti in San Francisco. Thank you for allowing me to be with you on stage today. Hey, what's going? What's oh. happening with your voice right now? This is a powerful Darth Vader style presence. <laughs> it came with the birth certificate. I believe I came out of the uh, maternity ward saying, feed me, mother, feed me. There, there you go. So are you a voiceover guy? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a voiceover actor and uh, do a lot of other things. I'm a grandfather as well. But I wanted to join you today and say thank you and welcome to Fireside. You're going to have a blast. I've been on her for several months broadcasting every day, and you're going to do great. Oh, thank you, dude. I'm, I'm I'm hearing you right now, and I'm like, how do we get this guy to do some voiceovers for our radio show? You got a badass voice, bro. Well, just contact me. Let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. Right now, I'm speaking through my iPhone, so uh, we're doing the best we can. Uh, you, had, uh, the, you had the you had the amazing yeah that the iPhone mics are tremendous. Actually, you had the amazing Paul on stage, and I was just doing some research on him, and I looked up his net worth. You know how people can do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What and I wanted it? to ask. I wanted to ask Paul, is it accurate? It says he's worth 18 million. And if, if so, can I borrow 20 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> 18 million. Well, do me a favor and uh, see if mine is on there. Uh, to, and if you haven't already looked this up, see, see if I'm on there and I'll tell you how accurate it is. Ben Rogers, All right, I'll, Ben and Skin Show. Fantastic. I'll be right back. I'll report back in just a moment. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, because I know my kids looked it up one time and it was inaccurate. <laughs> Dude, could you believe his voice? No, no, it's incredible. It's nuts. It's incredible. Okay, so you can just join with audio. Like he he yep. he chose not to do. Okay, so I see a bunch of people that are here listening. They have to request to join. Is that is that how it works? They can, or we can invite them. If you see a name down there, you want me to ping. All right, let's see. Let's, let's, let's check in. Party in here. Let's check in with Cheese here, inviting to video. Oh, yeah. There we go. You got that? Okay. There he is. What's up, Cheese? How you doing, brother? You know, it's good. It's funny because they say, like, in Frisco that the, uh, you know, average salary is, like, 100000 And I always say, well, I'm glad I could bring that down a little bit. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, hey and i see i see you rocking the roller town hat dude much love are you uh are you coming out to the brewery funny on saturday for some sumo wrestling i know so i i live you know up north and even though i i would love to do the event for obviously a skin and down down by the kessler i think the uh the easier events for me are up uh north so that's why i get the chance to go to roller town um but in roller town's event tomorrow i will be there i actually plan on bringing the whole family uh, as you obviously say a lot the um the brewery is family friendly and it's it's great the environment that you create so uh appreciate that brother appreciate yeah, that yeah. Uh, really looking forward to it it was great to see skin wasn't it it really was man I've been, like i said I've been praying for the guy I, I've, he's gonna come out on top so we're we're confident that uh he's doing what he needs to do I realize there's people who, who uh, and it's cool because uh, like talking to Chris, who's in, I think he said San Francisco, there's people that are jumping on here that may be more familiar with Fireside than they are with our show. And uh, Skin is my best friend since we were 12. Um, we met playing pickup basketball at Huffines Recreation Center in Richardson. We dropped out of college to be rappers, crashed and burned. I know that's shocking. That didn't work. 
And then uh, we somehow snuck into the radio business and we've been doing radio shows for over 20 years. And our show is now on two to five on 97 one, the Eagle, but uh, skin was diagnosed with head and neck cancer either in late November or December. And um, he had some tumors removed from his neck and now he's halfway through his radiation treatments and uh, the next, you know, 10 days to two weeks, three weeks are going to be incredibly difficult on him. And uh, he said it's like sunburning the inside of your throat. So um, we're just thinking about him, sending him positive love and uh, energy. And uh, we cannot wait to have him back. And I know the whole community feels that way. And he's also on the Mavs television broadcast and he does a great job there. So uh, that's who jumped on with us at the beginning. That's 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 my homie. And uh, anyways, if you if you weren't super familiar with our show, that's who Skin was who jumped on first. Well, uh, yeah. Cheese, any questions or anything I could do for you today, brother? You know, no, no. I just want to just let everybody know how I, I'm going to be there at the event tomorrow, Roller Town. I'm really looking forward to that. And also, I actually just want to say Paul Varghese is one of the funniest people that there is. He's I've actually, you know, born and raised in Dallas. I've been familiar with his work for a long time. And that guy got to finally meet him at the brewery when he did the um, uh, stand up there. And the guy is hilarious. And it's so cool. Even just listening to him today was just entertainment. So, yeah, totally agree. And, uh, dude, I love you. Thanks for jumping on. And uh, we will see you uh, Saturday at Roller Town for some sumo wrestling. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. God bless. All right, man. All right. Take care. God bless you, too. Uh, all right, Chris, did you find out my, did you find out my net worth? Uh, let's see if Chris is still with us. Yes, sir. We're still here. And uh, breaking news, according to fame ranker, you are worth $1.2 million. That would be the down payment on a fixer upper here in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is it accurate. I'm worth $37. Um, so yeah. <laughs> And my wife gets half of that if she wants it at any point. Um, so congratulations. Right, Thank you very much. And, uh, man, I sincerely uh, would love to reach out to you again. Keep in mind, I only have $37. That's my budget. But I'm going to reach out to you because your voice is extraordinary. And we'd love to, to have you on to do some voice work for us for sure. Well, thank you so much. I'd love to help you out. Also, here on Fireside, before I go, let me mention that Craig Kilborn has an account here. And uh, he talks about basketball quite extensively and other things about life. So check Very him out. Nice. Follow him. Yeah. Have a great yeah. day. Thank you. Hey, great talk. See you out there. Uh, there he goes. And that is a shout out to Craig Kilborn, uh, that line right there. Okay. So, Jason, uh, do we have people who want to jump on and uh, ask a question? And how do they do that if they want to? I think they do just like Chris. They the left, it's a uh, bottom left. They click the button, ask you a question. Um, or, oh, they you know, no, they, could... they click something if they want to join. They click uh, speakers at the top. I think so. Or is, or do they see? I'm not. Sure. I think it's to the left. I think you request. Either on the left bottom or that speaker's button. Actually, I think, yeah, I think there's a couple of ways. I think they can do that a couple of ways. Yeah. And they can join us like Chris. There we go. <clears throat> oh, Chris. I bet Chris knows. That's what I bet he's trying to tell okay. us. Okay, yeah. good. Yes, if you're in the audience, you'd like to join the conversation or ask to join the conversation, press on the two lines on the bottom left of your device, and you have several options appear. And one at the very top says request to speak. You do that, and then if the host wants to allow you on stage, they will allow you to come on stage by accepting that request, or the host can invite you to speak by pressing their buttons, invite to speak. And then the host has the option to ask you to join by camera, or just you can stay audio. I decline to join by camera because of my awesomeness. I do want to not distract from the broadcast with my awesome face. So thank you. <laughs> That's how you do that, folks. It's easy to do. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. That is literally the voice of God. That is incredible. I can't, dude. He knows he's his just strength. His... Audio only. That's his. That's his route. He he knows his skills, bro. He's just on an iPhone mic too. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna start clicking on people and inviting yeah. them to video. Uh, and let's see who we got here. 
Uh, again, no, not knowing if these are folks who are familiar with the Ben and Skin Show or if these are people who are just familiar with the Fireside app. But, um, hey, you're all welcome to the party, man. This is what's really cool about this app. Just This is what attracted me um, is how interactive it is. And, Jason, you know that our show, like, we pride ourselves in actually being accessible and interactive. We love that. So this is kind of perfect for us. Yep, yep. What what did you what were you gonna add to that? <laughs> I don't have much to add to that. I am not a pro talker. <laughs> awesome. We well here we go. Uh this is my guy Nicholas. What is up, bro? The country music sensation. How you living? Good man. I uh chilling in my new truck. <laughs> nice. What what'd you get? Uh got me a Chevy Silverado. 2022 okay. oh yeah very man nice did you, did you take advantage of that incredible deal that we offered from uh, autoplex i didn't i probably should have but uh my wife wanted to sell our other car so we just went to a dealership and got it done so okay let's lie did you get it from autoplex <laughs> i did um yes. actually our last two vehicles are from autoplex <laughs> That's awesome. So, dude, what's been going on with you and your musical career? You are a straight badass. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, nothing much, really. Just been playing around, doing some music in the studio, and uh, just getting some things done that way. But um, we got a show tonight if this apocalypse of winter weather doesn't hit us. Uh, hopefully, we'll get that going out in Burleson. But, yeah, but yeah man, just been, just been jamming. Let's yeah, man. Um, Where are you going to be? Uh, the Old Texas Brewing Company out in Old Town Burleson. Um, it'll be 815 to 1115 out there. And so if you guys want to get out to uh, south of Fort Worth, come on and join us. I know uh, I know we'll, we'll be warm up, up on a rooftop. It'll be enclosed, but we'll have heaters and all that good stuff. So Okay, good. Dude, we need to have you come play Roller Town. We're, just, we're set up for a very small acoustics type situation. Can you pull that off too or no? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure, man. We could do, uh, we could do a smaller little thing. Yeah, I think we could definitely make that work. I'd love to get out there. We're like I just said, we're in Burleson, so we're like an hour and a half from you guys. <laughs> but uh, maybe you can, since you're worth like over a million, you can get your helicopter to come grab you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd or, <laughs> or maybe God can talk it into existence. Who was just on here? But <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, that guy had a great voice, didn't he? Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> we got uh, Ricky here too. What's up, Ricky? What's going on, man? How you living? Oh, you know, living the dream. Uh, Speaking of Old Texas Brewery Company, that is my spot, man. I'm there all the time. Okay. Well, are you What's up, Ricky? All place? right. Uh, I will not be there tonight. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> one less, one less person. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hey, where are you? Are you from? Are you from Burleson, Ricky? Or yeah, I live in Burleson. Yeah, I live in Burleson. Awesome, man. That's great. Um, what's your favorite? What's your favorite restaurant out in Burleson? I always love kind of hearing everybody's recommendations. One hundred percent, the Old Texas Brewery Company. Nice. All right. Okay. Yeah, they, they have a great, up there. They have great food there. Well, yeah, they need uh, to get some Roller Town out there. Oh, for Nicholas, sure. Nicholas, make it happen while you're there tonight. See if you can get some Roller Town in there. All right. Yeah, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna get back on the road here, but I'm gonna get Roller Town out there. I promise. I'm a salesman at heart. I'm gonna get it out. There you go. Hey, keep up the great work. Enjoy the new truck, and let us know anytime you got new music out, so we can play it on the show. Will do, man. Hey, much continued sex to all of you. Hey, much continued sex to you too, sir. And uh, thanks, Ricky. How did you? Uh, how did you? Uh, have you? Are you a listener of the show? Do you? Do you enjoy the Ben and Skin show? Talk to me here. I do enjoy the Ben and Skin show. I love it. Um, I started listening to you, well, ish listening to you guys back when y'all were on the ticket. I'm a huge P1. And then when y'all moved to Live 105, I dedicated myself to y'all show, the boat show. I loved when y'all moved when y'all moved over there, I loved y'all's talk. It wasn't a lot of sports then. It was just y'all's y'all's basically just hot talk. Yeah. And then yeah. I, then when it switched over, <clears throat> when 1053 switched over to to uh, sports, I kind of went back to being a full time P1. Because, you know, that's where I get my sports information. Yeah. And now yeah. when you're on the Eagle, like, I, I think I told you this before through uh, comments and stuff that uh, as a big, huge P- P1, I am a huge fan of the Hang Zone. So I normally finish up their program, then jump over to listen to you guys. Uh, 
I will say this. When I listen to the ticket, I'm always on the, the ticket app or the sports day app. So when, when I'm listening to you guys, I hate it because I hear something I want to rewind and listen back. I can't do that with y'all show. Oh, yeah. The app doesn't do that. Yeah. Well, you can always go back and uh, get the podcast, though, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And I do it the podcast. Right that minute. I like I like to write that minute. Hear something that that made me laugh. It's like, hold on, what did I miss before that? Because you know my brain goes crazy. I, listen, yeah. I hear all things are go, all kind of things are going on in my brain while I'm listening to stuff. So I feel like I miss a lot of things. Yeah. So when I hear something funny, I always want to go back and get, get the lead up story to why it was so funny. Yeah. Well, uh, dude, as you know, uh, we're grateful for the support, and we can't make it without it. So the fact that you. Uh, Hey, you listen to the ticket. You're a P1. You know, Skin and I are P1s. We started there. Christina and KT started there. Um, and it was a massive part of, of our career. You know, I think Skin and I were there from, I think, 2001 to 2007, something like that. And uh, and then started at Live 105.3, as you referenced. But uh, it's been a crazy ride, man. It's it's uh, It still blows me away that we're somehow tricking everyone into doing this. I keep <laughs> thinking somebody's going to walk in and go, get the hell out of here. You guys don't belong here. But, um, yeah, thank you for your support, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for jumping on here. Yeah, thanks for invi- inviting me. Absolutely. Take care. There he goes. Ricky, appreciate that support. Um, yeah, so our business is uh, – it is it – is, it, it's fascinating to me. And uh, – you know, I know a lot of folks just want to turn on the radio and, and uh, be entertained, and that's what it's all about. Um, but for us, you know, I fell in love with the ticket, and, and uh, my brother tells me that I was the ninth caller to ever call in on the ticket. And so, um, you know, Skin and I had terrible jobs at that time. We were still trying to make it as rappers. We had a job at a company called Business Cards Tomorrow, and we would um, – Dry, we'd wake up in the morning, we'd go cut business cards at a print shop and then ha- take a carload full of boxes and then go deliver those boxes to like stores all around the Metroplex. And so I was in my car all day. I was so poor and broke. My car stereo got stolen when I was at the state fair and I never was able to replace it. So I had no car stereo. I was a courier. And so all day long, I kept a jam box that um, it was my mom's jam box and I jacked it from her house. It was the antenna was broken. So I had a coat hanger antenna in the passenger seat and I listened to the ticket when it came on. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. These guys are musicians and they have other interests and it's not just sports, sports, sports. And all respect to people that are really into sports and do that sports broadcasting. That's hardcore sports. I. I have a lot of respect for them and and people who enjoy that. That's fine. But for me, I wanted something more than that. I didn't want just the box scores and sports, 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 sports. Uh, To me, there was sports as a part of my life, but not my whole life. And so Skin and I were like, golly, this ticket thing, this is fun. Oh my God. Listen to Gordon Keith and fake Jerry and all these bits and pranks and stuff. And I used to love the jerky boys and pranks and bits. And I've always loved Saturday night live. And so the idea of, uh, you know, a radio show that could be fun and with a little bit of sports was really fascinating to us. So we kind of got in at the ticket doing the maps post game show. Cause skin is brilliant. And uh, we turned that into some weekend shows and then vacation fill in. And then uh, our first full-time opportunity was outside of the ticket at live one Oh five, three. And uh, our show led into the Russ Martin show, I believe. And, um, you know, that was 2007. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I I guess, within a couple months, there was a full format change, which we didn't anticipate. And it was like, welcome to the radio business. And it was, we were getting death threats and uh, Skin actually did. I I think they wanted me to live. Um, But uh, it was was a challenging time. And, you know, to chase that dream, it was, uh, you know, by that time I'd graduated from college, got a degree and was selling advertising. And uh, the great Rick Mills gave me my first job in Karen O'Connell. <clears throat> and then I had moved over to CBS 11, Adam Levy and uh, Matt Flewelling allowed me to continue to chase the radio thing on the side. My first full time. Oh, oh. And I worked at Univision for a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, but uh 
my first full-time radio job, it was, it was a $100,000 pay cut. And what that tells you is that there's not a lot of money in radio, but to chase a dream and to go for it and to this idea that, you know, any life worth living is um, a life that for me, you need to swing for the fence every once in a while. And I already crashed and burned chasing, you know, a hip hop dream. And um, so the idea of chasing the radio dream was, I was like, I, I guess once you fail, you're more fearless at chasing your dream. And so to chase the radio thing was, um, it wasn't uh, scary anymore. It was like, why not? Let's go for it. The worst thing can happen is we fail. We've already done that. And so uh, it was all about taking our shot and like, look, you're here on earth for a limited amount of time. You might as well go for it. And uh, we did. And, and, you know, we worked at uh, Fox Sports 1190. And during that time, we were sending tapes of our show to Bruce Gilbert. And he was giving us free advice when we didn't even work for him. We turned that into the Mavs postgame show around 2001. Um, like I said, we grew it into some opportunities at the ticket, then live 105.3, then it turned to 105.3 the fan. Then they brought in a notorious asshole named Tom Bigby. Uh, do not rest in peace. And he he uh, he tortured us. He made our lives terrible, and it was unbearable to be there. So we begged out of our contract. Basically, uh, he just when he had you know when he ran the fan, he, his his whole pitch was, "Hey, if you hire me to be a consultant here at the fan, we will beat the ticket." And we were like, "What?" And uh, he goes, listen to that station. Those guys aren't even talking all sports. We'll talk all sports and we'll crush them. And we were like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'll never forget uh, the first meeting that we had with him after he did get the job. He said, uh, we'll never catch the ticket. So what we got to do is beat ESPN. And we were like, holy shit, uh, this is the weirdest thing ever. And so he made us meet with him uh, for, you know, we did a five and a half hour show and we'd have to meet with him for like 30 minutes right up to showtime and he would tell us all we'd tell him that what we had planned for the show and he would say no 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 and he'd just destroy our show and then we had to go on the air and for five and a half hours of content we only had like an hour of approved content and so we were on the phone with our agent every day after the show just trying to find out ways to beg out of our contract they wanted us to quit or he wanted us to quit um, he wanted to separate us. He wanted to change our show to Rogers and Wade, the name of it. He wanted to put one of us on at like 4 a.m., one of us on at midnight just to make our lives miserable. And so we begged out, begged out, begged out. Finally, they let us out of our contract, which is almost unheard of. So we begged out of our contract. We got out. And Frito, Mark Frito Friedman, who had uh, he was the assistant program director at the ticket, he actually went to Berkner High School. And we had a great relationship with Frito and Frito had gone to 103.3 ESPN. So Frito invited us uh, once our non-compete was up to go to ESPN. So we went to ESPN radio and it was so much fun. We had an absolute blast there. You know, we were doing all sports, which isn't what we wanted to do, but we were free from Big B. And so it was a great way to make a living. And at that time, we got to work with Randy Galloway, an absolute legend, and the Rangers went to back-to-back -back trips to the World Series, and the Mavericks won an NBA title. So during that time, we got to go to every home and away game during that whole adventure, all three of those adventures. And it was the time of our lives, man. Just totally, totally enjoyed it and grew our brand. Let's talk about the suits there. So the idea was um, you know, we wanted to do that show with us and Randy for as long as possible. And because it was a lot of fun. And then one day uh, when Randy retired, then we would take over afternoon drive. And that's kind of what they had talked to us about. And um, we had hoped that Randy would keep going for another 20 years and then we could lead into a show. And that would be phenomenal. And um, and so our contract was up and we were negotiating and they were like, look, we can only offer you a three month deal, which is insane because. And radio, uh, especially if you've had been around for a while and you've had some success, you you never should be offered any. It'd be insulting to be to uh, be offered something that was um, less than two years. And so a three month deal with a three no, it's a three month deal with I think a six month non compete. So it was absurd. 
So we'll only guarantee you three months. And then you can't work after that for six months. It's like, what the fuck? Um, we found out later that um, the reason they were negotiating that way with us is because they were just about to sell the signal and they were going to get out of the radio business, so to speak. And they didn't, they didn't want to have owned and operated stations anymore. And um, so they were telling us, hey, accept this deal. I promise you it's going to be better than what it looks like. You're going to be here for a decade. But we were just like, man, we can't trust like the suits in Bristol or that we don't even know or like it was it was terrible. So we decided to not accept that deal and bet on ourselves again. And then we went back to 105.3 The Fan. They, they were dealing with some chaos. You know, the Big B was gone, but the station was not what it what it could have been. And it was struggling. And so we went over there to 105.3 The Fan and, um, you know, it uh it became apparent that if we ever wanted to go back to the ticket, that that wouldn't probably be a possibility because it's kind of the vibe was once you leave, you can never go back. And um, even though, you know, they helped us leave because there was nowhere for us to go there. And, and really not this, the schedule hasn't changed at the ticket um, very much since then. So we might still be doing weekends had we stayed. So, so anyways, we are back at the fan and, um, you know, I think the most important thing we realized there was like, look, the some of these shows have a really good following, but there's no unification. Like that was one of the things that was great about the ticket. Everybody was in it together in a bunker. And I love that mentality. It was like a team. And so we were like, well, Sean and RJ have a good following. This is awesome. Uh, the G-Bag Nation has a good following and we have a good following. So what if we just could... Uh, could build something where you turn it on and you leave it on and you never change it and you stay locked in. And, uh, we did that and, and it was so much fun to be a part of that. And we developed some great friendships that'll last forever. But, um, the reality is that anytime something is going good in radio, there's a chance that there's East coast suits looming ready to take a giant hospital pillow and suffocate the joy out of it. And it's always it's typically these East Coast guys that want all sports. And so if the fun is removed and they're like, hey, you can't have fun, you can't do pop culture, you can't do songs, bits, pranks, it's like that is not appealing to us. And so once again, we were in a situation where we couldn't do the show that we wanted to do. We had no creative freedom and we were being offered a deal to stay. But we decided once again to not accept that deal to test free agency, to go out there with no promise of an additional opportunity. And, uh, and we did, we caught an opportunity at 97 one, the Eagle. And we're grateful because it's an iconic station in Dallas, Fort Worth, Kid Craddock, Howard Stern, uh, Russ Martin show, all these um, giant radio icons have, have been on that station. I used to have a 97 one, the Eagle sticker on my door when I was a kid growing up. So anyways, um, we had that opportunity to come over and um, when we, when we did land that, you know, Hey, Kevin Turner, who we love and respect was available. We were able to bring him on. We brought Christina Ray on and we've had so much fun, but it's, we've launched this show on a pandemic. So, I mean, shortly after we started a global pandemic, so it's been a wild ride, but the one thing I can tell you for sure is uh, we're honored to be on the station. We have so much fun. There's so much creative freedom. It's the best version of our show that has ever existed. And um, again, we're fighting, scrapping and clawing to hold on to this dream. And that's why we love interacting with people. You know, Ben and Skin listener group on Facebook. We always figure that if um, if somebody is trying to decide between two shows they want to listen to and they're friends with one of the shows and they've met them and they're super nice guys uh, and they click, then they'll listen to that show where they have a connection. So we're, we're desperate and eager to make those connections and they're authentic and they mean the world to us. So sometimes you meet radio hosts and they, they honestly don't want any interaction with you. They want to turn it off when they're not doing their show. And that always upset me as a listener. If I really thought somebody was awesome listening to them on the radio and then I met them and they, they weren't even nice to me. I was like, what the fuck is this? Anyways, that's kind of our story for those of you who don't know. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of, sorry, start rambling a little bit. That's, that's kind of our deal. So anyways, this is breakfast with Ben. If anybody has any other questions or, or wants to jump in before we get out of here, welcome to do that. What's up with you, Jason? 
just doing things and stuff. Yeah, looking this at is you just, talk words. Hey, this is just. A, what are you gonna say? I haven't seen that room from this angle in a while. Look at your little oh, ring really? light and stuff. Yeah, I got a little ring light back there. I got this is my full on. Uh, this was for the. Uh, can can I turn my phone around? I don't know if I can. I'll just show you. There's this is what I set up for doing the after darks. Oh yeah, yeah. Breakfast with Ben. That's cold breakfast. <laughs> It's a cold breakfast now, but it's a uh, cold breakfast. Yeah. So, uh, man, I dig this app. I think there's potential here. Um, I love the interaction with folks. And if anybody else wants to jump on, I invited a bunch of people. It's probably awkward since not a lot of people are super familiar with it right now, right? Yeah. And, you know, some people like to listen more than they like to talk. Yeah. Everyone is a zen. Look at that light. Oh, that's fine. Oh, hey, wait. Fletcher wants to say what's up. What's up, Fletcher? Hey, man. How you doing, brother? Oh, man, just get, getting my workout in, watching you All guys. Right. What are you doing? Are you on uh, like a Stairmaster or Peloton or something? What are you doing? I'm on the Peloton. Okay. I sold out. Very... <laughs> We, uh, I did that. I bought a Peloton, but all we do is like hang clothes on it. <laughs> That's what the treadmill's for. We're sending it back today. <laughs> right. Uh, are you, uh, are you going to come out and watch some sumo wrestling at Roller Town on Saturday? Man, I'm, I'm going to the Black Pumas Saturday night. Oh, hell yes. That yeah. is going to be awesome. Uh, it's gonna yeah, be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I, I missed them. I missed them the last time they were at the Kessler. So, uh, Black Pumas, Abraham Alexander, Fort Worth's own, gonna perform. Very nice, very nice. Well, uh, this is my tiny dog. Uh, this is Bo. Are you able to see Bo? <laughs> yeah, that isn't uh, as yep. tiny as I thought it was gonna be. Well, yeah, it I'm is. And it's tiny, tiny dog. Well, compared to it, your other big, giant, fluffy dogs, it is tiny. Yeah, this dog is tiny. What are you talking about, bro? But here's what I'll say about tiny dogs. Tiny dogs are awesome because it's all the love of a giant dog. Like, you get to enjoy all the best things. But tiny poops. That is definitely your favorite part of that dog. Every time you talk about that little tiny dog, we get to hear about Tiny poops. Well, uh, Fletcher, you are the uh, the Lego king. You make awesome uh, Lego movies. Uh, you do all the Seinfeld Lego stuff on Instagram. is is so phenomenal. Uh, is there anything we can promote or do for you before we let you go? Oh man, just uh, yeah, follow the accounts. Uh, Lego Seinfeld on TikTok, Instagram. Uh, follow my wife on Instagram, Stevie Pendergrass. She's a local realtor. She's awesome. So I'm going to shamelessly promote her. Yes. Very nice. Uh, did you want to show us any? Hey, Ben, I got a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Did you want to show us any pics of your wife? Oh, I'll show her right now. <laughs> Look at this pretty little thing. Hi. I'm not looking doing? too pretty right now. <laughs> How you doing? I like her. She likes me. How much? My wife. Um, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> Slappy de bass. <laughs> well, what did you want to tell us before you get hey, here? Hey, uh, what's the skinny on the uh, on the hero celebrity game? Well, what I will tell you about that is that I'm hearing whispers, just little tiny whispers, that. If everything continues to go the way it's going in terms of the global pandemic, that maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe might happen this year. But uh, there's nothing for sure, and I'm by no means the official voice for this thing, but I'm just hearing little whispers that if everything continues to move on the way it is, that, uh, that maybe we see that again at some point this year. That'd be awesome. Okay, That'd man. That'd be awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hey, I'm ordering a – I got a big German keg – Ordered from Cool Keg in Arlington. Uh, yes. Can't wait to put it in the backyard. Hell yes. That is yeah. awesome. I love it. I, I think anybody who gets a keg, we should try to get by there and have a beer with them. So we need to try to do that. Uh, what part of town are you in? 
I'm in Grand Prairie over by Joe Pool. That's a long drive for you. But we'll have karate in the garage. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, we'll be best friends. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Fletcher. Appreciate it, brother. Hey, see ya. Take care. All right. Fletcher Pentagrass. That guy's awesome. Love that dude. Well, uh, this has been Breakfast with Ben. I didn't do a very good job of attacking this breakfast uh, or getting on it, but uh, I am grateful for each and every one of you. Uh, Thanks for joining. Jason, thanks for making this happen. I'm digging the Fireside app. And, um, yeah, if uh, you know, we'll do another one here soon, and I look forward to having KT and Christina on. And we'll do some at night as well. But, um, yeah, man, anything you want to add here, Jason, before we get out? I think we should track your consumption of your breakfast through the course of these breakfasts with Ben. <laughs> how cold it is, how much we've got. We'll check in every 10 or so minutes. Where are we at here? I want to see food going into okay. your mouth. <laughs> okay, good. Done. We will do that. Um, hey, uh, for Jason Farantello, for Skin, for Paul Varghese, to all the nice people who jumped on and, and joined us here, thank you guys very much. Thank you for continuing to support our little show. We thank you for continuing to support our brewery dream. Don't forget live sumo wrestling at the brewery in Salina on Saturday from two to five. Appreciate you guys. Hopefully you'll tune in to the show today uh, from two to five on 97, one, the Eagle. Peace. We out.